beautiful people and welcome to the 6th edition of the Burn On Vlog. I'm Will Ogburn. I'm Trip White. Yes sir, we got a bunch of stuff going on. We're coming to you today from beautiful Panama City, Florida. Uh, people just got done yelling outside. I don't know what the hell was going on. What the hell are they doing? There's that yell. Whoa! Room time! He said it! He said it! Yeah, no, it is a beautiful out here. It's Memorial Day weekend, so um, everybody's, everybody and their brother's coming out to Panama City Beach right now. It's actually being invaded by Alabamians right now. One of the worst tech collections we've ever seen because of all these terrible, terrible people that are invading our beaches. It's awful. I'm from, they're reliving their uh, teenage years. Yes, go Tigers, by the way. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about the return of Ramirez. Mayor Ramirez is coming back, and what we're going to do. I'm going to be talking about uh, the French Open, or the Roland Garros Open that's happening in uh, France right now, uh, in tennis. Woo, tennis! Let's get started. It is a real sport, though. So, another layer to the onion that many Ramirez's very interesting career has uh, been opened up by the Chicago Cubs. And uh, the Cubs, who obviously are looking long term with the GM Theo Epstein, uh, have brought him in as their new hitting coach. Okay, okay, so how's that working out for him? Um, well, so far there aren't really any results, but I think it's very interesting that uh, no one's really ever described Manny Ramirez as a good fundamental hard working player. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, whenever you watch like some of the highlight tapes, all it is is pretty much just him messing up. Really. Him just falling down yeah. in the outfield. Manny being Manny, dude. But, I mean, if you want to follow the Manny Ramirez creed of how to play baseball, of course you have to be terrible at fueling, unathletic, and use a bunch of steroids to hit power. So, hey, there's a lot of wisdom to be found in that. Exactly. I mean, that's all you need. If you can hit power, I mean, why even be good on your feet? But, uh, yeah, so he's being uh, brought in in the rare player-manager role that we usually haven't seen past about 1960. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what he does. Theo Epstein has made it very clear that he's not going to have a spot on the Cubs' actual roster. But uh, he's saying that maybe there will be some team that will swoop in and take the career thief 312 hitter from the, right under the Cubs' nose in their triple system. Meanwhile, in France. Meanwhile, in France. Uh, so, meanwhile, <laughs> in France, uh, we've got the Roland Garros Open going on. We're right about halfway through the first round, and all the main guys that you would expect to win the first round have pretty much won the first round. Awesome, super compelling story, too. <laughs> well, uh, anyways, moving on to from that. Um, who do you think is going to win the French Open? Well, I mean, if it's the French Open, you got to pick Rafa until he just completely craps the bed and has a terrible performance. Yeah. I mean, in the last couple of years, it's all been about Aaron McGee's heritage and never beat Djokovic, and then he just slammed Djokovic before last year. I want to pull for Djokovic in this too, but he has yet to win in the Roland Garros Open, and I don't think that he, this year, has necessarily exactly what it takes. I mean, he lost to uh, Stan Wawrinka in the, uh, the Aussie Open, mm -hmm. uh, like this year, and yeah, he's just that's his surface, and this isn't his surface. He's not necessarily used to playing on the surface, but I just, I don't think that Djokovic is gonna have to take. So I'm, I'm probably with you there with uh, Nadal. Maybe, maybe Stan. Nadal makes like all these little tennis events his Super Bowl. He just goes to everything. He's like, right. oh yeah, Palm Beach Open, let's go. Let's exactly. hit that. You got the Iowa Open, we're about to hit that. Let's go. We got the Gulf Breeze Open, we're going to that. Exactly, but what that does is that just racks up his ATP points to where he's just won in the world because he just has like 13,000 ATP points. The next person below him has like maybe 10,000 with Djokovic and then below that's maybe five. Yeah, so Rafa's really just taking tennis very seriously and it's so funny how much of a difference one year can make. Cause Coming off of the injury, I was like, you knew Rafa lost it, like I yeah. said, but certainly he's the king of the, uh, king of the sport right now. Definitely right now, and if, if he wins this, he'll just be one more title closer to matching uh, Roger Federer's record that is still standing at 17 right now. Definitely so. We'll be looking forward to that. Thank you for joining us on today's Burn On Vlog. I'm Will Ogren. I'm Trip White, in case you guys haven't picked up on that yet. Yeah, for real, and uh, hopefully we'll get some videos from parasailing, some go karts, we're going to rent like a little baby cars, think you call it. Yeah, they're like little, uh, little beetle cars that are like completely open cockpit. Should be pretty fun. So, keep going wrong. Some of that included losing to Colorado and getting the field stormed, and that's okay. Yeah, it was a bad team in Georgia, but he's all they had, man. And you know what happens when the going gets tough?